Yo, 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 what is going on, AOEM Familia? It is your boy BN, aka Mr. Kingdom Builder, and today we're going to be giving you an entire kingdom slash map breakdown where we're going to look at uh, what is available in each of the zones. We will click and go through details, so if you're looking to get the particulars, uh, requirements for being able to capture, attack, interact, engage with structures and buildings on the map, we're going to be showing all of that off starting with zone one, we'll work to a zone two, and then eventually go to zone three. Uh, and just talk about some tidbits here and there. Okay, uh, I guess before we get started, as always, if you enjoy the content, make sure you really appreciate it. Okie dokie, let's dive right in. So let's first start off by looking at an empty zone one, because I just think it'll be easier to like see everything compared to if we go to a zone one that is already occupied with a number of alliances and territories. So we'll go to Nilos here. And we're going to start zooming in slowly here, and we can already see that uh, we have some of these uh, kind of river or boat crossings here. We'll zoom in a little bit more. Now we can see uh, a number of, looks like cities, and if we click on these, they are. So city of uh, level 5 cities, and then we have a level 9 capital, which is funny because anyone here who's played in Infinity Kingdom, you may notice that there are some similarities with like the positionings, uh, the names of certain buildings, their levels, uh, and just kind of how some of the zones play out. Even some of the district territories, too, as well, is, is some minor similarities. Okay, and then we have level six, and these are called sun docks, so docks, if we will. We'll zoom in a little bit more and see if we get a new one. Okay, so a little bit more. Oh, cool, look at this. So now we can see a monument, uh, which looks like level two. Okay. Uh, okay, now we can see some of the passes, uh, but these are called mountain forts. Uh, and then also looks like, oh, hang on, actually, I, th I thought it was over here we saw it, or it might have been. Okay, yeah, so look on this side, a little bit different, right? We have the river crossings versus the passes on the opposite side. Okay, let's zoom in a bit more. I think that was three clicks. Let's go up here. Okay, so look, now we can see some level three towns. Uh, looks like there's a number of those two as well around. I think there was six level five cities we saw. And this is one, two, three, four, uh, five. I think we already, yep, we already did that one. Five, we'll go over here. So six. We did that one. So this looks like seven, eight, nine. So nine? Okay, so maybe nine. So maybe there's six level five, nine level threes. And then it looks like we see a level two and a level one monument. So there's a few monuments around. Maybe there's five monuments. That kind of is what it looks like. One, and there's one over here. That was four. And then maybe five is up here somewhere. No? Okay, so maybe three level one monuments and a level two. Right? That kind of looks like it. All right. Uh, let's go in a little bit more. And see, okay, so now we can start seeing the outline, uh, which is the districts or the territory tiles. Uh, and essentially with these and how they work is you have to build a flag or fort. And typically in, in these games, usually they would ask for you to build a fort first. So I believe that is the same here from what I saw based on the alliance I joined. And then you could start flagging out. Uh, and we will zoom in a little bit more. You can see now the territory is getting a little bit more textualized and colorful. And we're going to zoom in until hopefully you can see this. <clears throat> Start seeing some more details. We'll zoom in a bit more. Here we go. So now you can see these blocks, which are called territory foundations. This is where you're building your flags, your forts. Okay. Uh, and then we also have other kind of indicators. You can see like some wood tiles, etc. These are all pretty. Let me see if we can zoom in. I don't know how much more zoom did I have to be to see these. Here we go. Hopefully it'll pop up here in a sec. So you can see we have an Alliance Farm, uh, which this works pretty similarly to how Rise of Kingdoms does, where if you, f if you flag the tile and you occupy the territory foundation, any of the RSS or Alliance RSS that is within that square or within that tile's area will then apply to your RSS income as an Alliance. Right, So all you basically have to do is just flag and then that flag's territory just has to encompass or surround or have the alliance tile within your flag's territory is another way to say it. Uh, you have an alliance lumber camp, 
Uh, and again, very similarly, right? You'll see some of these that are throughout territory, uh, like we just saw there. You'll see a quarry that's over there for stone. I don't know if we'll find a gold one, but again, you get the general picture as it pertains to that. Uh, let's start clicking on some things and reading information. So it says building constructions on territory foundations to expand alliance territory. Um, I don't think there's anything that we can really look at probably beyond that. Yeah, no. Uh, okay, so we'll, we looked at the foundation territory. Let's go and find us a, let's kind of go in order here, right? So I want to do a level one, if we can find one, monument. And let's do that. And then we'll do the city, we'll do the town, and we'll do the capital, right? Kind of in that order. So here's a monument of wealth, Alliance Gold Mine. There's an example of one. And you can see here that the Citadel resource production is 5%. Increase, right? It also, let me see here. Oh, this, look, so this is plaque. So remember we were, we were curious on like where were all those plaques before? Maybe that is what the monuments are. Those are just referred to as plaques. I think we were looking at those in the Alliance. No, sorry. That was in the monument when we were looking through the Kingdom timeline for objectives, along with also seeing an area for plaques that was in the Alliance territory breakdown uh, video that we did yesterday. <clears throat> so monument of wealth. Let's read, let's read up on this. Occupation requirements. Alliances can declare war on a plaque when the event opens. If the preparation and siege stage exceed the opening period, the war cannot be declared. Alliances can declare war on a plaque without needing territory connection. Oh, that's cool. Each alliance has a limited number of plaques they can occupy. If the limit is exceeded, the alliance must abandon one before occupying another. Okay. Uh, siege. Wa one. War declaration. The alliance leader or one of the officials use war tokens to declare war on the building so that the alliance members can attack it. Ooh. That is... It's just, it's like, the most immediate thing I get is like, there's just too many hoops to jump through. Right? It may not seem like a lot, but in these types of games... Honestly, at least as it pertains to certain areas, less can very much be more. And you're adding on what I would just consider a completely unnecessary hoop to jump through, where you have to then use a, a, a resource in order to go and attack something or to declare war and attack something. Why can't I just click declare war and go? Like, it just, you see what I'm saying? Like, it, that part just doesn't make sense to me. Um, Again, we'd have to see, I'm, again, merely just talking about face value. Uh, maybe it really does work, and it makes a lot of sense. I'd have to see it, but um, I just, part of me doubts that. Uh, preparation. After declaring war, there is a period where the building cannot be attacked immediately. Utilize this time to prepare your troops and gather allies. The duration of the war preparation period increases with the level of the building. Okay. At war, once the preparation ends, swiftly launch an attack on the building. If your alliance fails <clears throat> to capture the building during this period, the war must be declared again. Any data regarding the war details will be deemed invalid. Okay. I just, I just, I don't know about the timer thing. Uh, I mean, this is something that I've seen happen in Infinity Kingdom 2 as well, where you're doing a siege on a city uh, or a certain structure. And you, you immediately get a time limit on how long you have to capture it. Instead of it just being almost kind of operating like a flag or a fort, right? Where if you're building or you're destroying it, the percentage and the numbers are going up or they're going down. Like, that's it. Uh, if, for example, let's say you stop attacking it and that structure or building needs to reset or maybe it'll just start passively recovering its durability, hit points, etc., Part of me just feels like there's just better ways to potentially do that. Uh, okay. Uh, let me see. Occupation. Once a building's durability is reduced to zero, the building is occupied. Okay, that's straightforward. Protection stage. Once a building is occupied, it enters the war immune period for some time. During which no alliance can declare war on the building. Closed. It is unable to declare war on closed buildings. Okay. Uh, let me see. Battle rules. Garrison. Only after defeating the garrison can the building's durability be destroyed. Two, please note that all garrison will fully recover after a period of time. Okay. I mean, that sounds normal. 
therefore, it is essential to occupy the city as quickly as possible. Okay. When both NPC and player troops are garrisoning a building, the attackers will battle against the NPC garrison first. Okay. Uh, this is actually pretty similar to Infinity Kingdom, uh, where you're attacking a structure and you have to, you basically have to uh, defeat the PVE units or the garrison units first, and then you can have your the the alliance that occupies that city uh go ahead and garrison behind those so once those are done then you start attacking the actual units so this is actually this is there's a number of similarities here uh the alliance that occupies the building gains the bonus effects it provides okay cool so that's how monuments work let's go to and there's probably no need to really go to like a level two uh in this case or uh yeah <clears throat> uh, so let's go to a, a town no sorry let's go to a yeah let's go to a town so we'll do the level three town Next, and we'll take a look here. Oh gosh, I'm gonna have to zoom in a little bit more here. I think is that enough to where I can click on this? Thank you. So cavalry attack five percent. Uh, we have garrison durability, first occupation, uh, and then town. Here we go. So let's read what this is, and maybe some of these are actually pretty much the same. We'll we'll see as we go. Occupation requirements can only occupy those neighboring to your line's territory. So that's different than a monument where you can attack the monument and capture it without having to connect territory. Uh, if a city you declared war on no longer meets the neighboring requirement, the war declaration will become invalid and you cannot continue to attack. Okay. The seed stage. Declare war. An alliance leader, so you have to use war tokens. Okay. City cannot be attacked immediately afterward. Okay. Same. Siege period. When the war preparation period ends, the siege period begins. Attack the city center as quickly as possible during the siege period or you will have to declare war again and then all data from the previous siege period will be deleted and will not be counted towards siege elimination rankings uh okay occupation durability has to be reduced to zero when multiple alliances attack one city simultaneously the alliance that makes the last it will occupy okay so that's nice to know so unlike uh, i guess maybe unlike monuments where maybe only one alliance can attack a monument at any given time or maybe they just didn't include that information on the occupation rules for monuments because to me to me there wasn't anything that would said you can only attack and only one alliance can attack a monument at a time so if you're having multiple wouldn't this also apply that would be my thought so maybe that might need to be added if so protection stage once the city is occupied don't enter okay cannot declare one of the city until the protection stage expires okay battle rules garrison only the only after defeating the garrison can buildings durability be destroyed okay after a certain period of time, the garrison will return to their initial state. Okay, so you need to destroy buildings and occupy the city quickly. Uh, center as quickly as possible before this occurs. Well, there are both NPCs. Okay, they'll attack the NPC first. Okay, so this is different morale. The city garrison with high morale has extremely strong attack and defense. Weakening the garrison's morale during siege battles can lead to better results and with much less effort. Okay. The buildings, outposts, and patrols in advanced cities can all increase the garrison's morale. Okay. Once a city is occupied, the Alliance can build and upgrade technology buildings on its foundations. During the city occupation, buffs of the identical effect and level do not stack, which means only one take... Oh, interesting. During us occupant, buffs of the identical effect... Oh, okay, interesting. So, basically what that means is very similar to other games. Uh, right, if you occupy two built... Like, two... Uh, uh, building objectives on in a zone and let's say both of those objectives give you increased building speed or increased research speed those buffs don't stack which means that the only value that you probably would get from attacking multiple cities would be like the first occupation rewards right uh, on average and then you could just like give up that city and that just depends on you know if you want to go how much attacking you obviously want to do at that point okay so that goes over the level three towns let's do the level five cities now <clears throat> if we can find one uh, okay, here we go. So we're going to have to zoom in a decent amount here, right? I think I'm zoomed in enough. This actually doesn't seem all that bad. Uh, okay. Let me see. Okay, so city pledge. This is all units type. Health plus 5%. Garrison, we see morale too as well. And then I can see this here for garrison. Ooh. Oh, nice. Cool. We'll We'll click on this. Actually, yeah, let's just read this real quick. So, city morale. Morale provides powerful buffs to the city center. Garris, uh, city center's garrison strengthens the city defense. The city center's morale is provided by the development buildings within the city and outposts. 
outside the city. For advanced cities, morale is also provided by the city patrols. Oh, wow. When occupying a city, destroy its morale, providing buildings and patrols first. That This will make the siege easier. Okay, so this is all stuff they've kind of said already. After occupying an advanced city, alliances can build their own buildings. Uh, only an alliance's own buildings will provide morale to the city center, thereby strengthening the city defense. Okay, so this is more or less the same. It's just really giving us a breakdown, right? Uh, we can see the morale bonus. I wonder why this is red. This is plus 130%. Shouldn't that be green or... I don't know. Maybe we're just you know going off that. Okay. Let's look at uh, level 5 occupation rules. Uh, so this is... Uh, must be... Uh, can only, okay, so you have to occupy. Makes sense. Siege stage. Uh, alliance leader. War, okay, we know that. Using war tokens. War prep period. City cannot be attacked immediately. Okay. Uh, get your, use this period to get your troops ready and rally. Okay, so we know that. Siege period. When the war... Prep, uh, period of siege period begins. Uh, okay, we know that. Occupation, city center, uh, durability is reduced to zero. Uh, and then can be occupied. Okay, we know that. Uh, last hit will occupy the city. Okay, so similar rules. Once the city is occupied, it will enter the protection stage. Okay, we know that. Battle rules, garrison only after defeating garrison. Okay, durability can be destroyed. After a certain period of time, the garrison will return to... Okay, we know that. Uh, battle against NPC garrison first. We know that. Morale. Uh, high morale. Okay, we know that. Tech buildings. Uh, and then again, identical city buffs to attack. Okay, so same thing there for occupation rules. Nothing really different on that front. Let's see, though. Is there anything that I'm missing? <clears throat> oh, maybe occupation rewards. We could do that. Uh, so these are general rewards that you'll get. Uh, we have the alliance uh, power, all units type health, and we have first occupation rewards. So this is actually not bad. It's 90 minutes, so it's 180 minutes, but just spread off uh, between. So we have first occupation rewards, first occupation participation rewards, and then you get uh, rewards based on rank. This actually isn't bad. Uh, so it looks, I mean, at least when it comes to particularly a decent amount. So it says, after a city is occupied by an alliance, the alliance members will continue to benefit from its resource production and city buffs. When a city is occupied for the first time, all alliance members will receive a first capture reward, and the participants will receive a participation reward. Rankings, ranking rewards will also be issued according to the elimination rankings and siege rankings. Okay. Cool, not bad. Uh, okay, let's, go, let's do the capital now. I think that's the last building that we maybe need to do, right? And capital should be over here. So we'll do capital for zone one, then we'll take a look at zone two. Fancy architecture. Ooh, wow, I have to zoom in a little bit more here. Okay, there we go. Oops. What is going on here? Can I not click on this? Oh, geez, I have to zoom in, like, really a lot. Uh, okay. So we have nothing else really on the interface. Okay, let's click on this so we have a little bit of time. Okay, occupation rules. Oh, wow. The City Clash event is held weekly. During the event, each alliance can launch attacks on the cities within each continent. You win by occupying a city for the stipulated period. At this point, the clash for that city ends immediately. Should the event end without any alliance having reached the minimum occupation time, then the last alliance to occupy the city wins. Hmm. Attacking a city does not require adjacency to the alliance's territory. Leaving or disbanding the alliance is prohibited during the event. Okay. So you have to basically go at it with everyone in order to capture the capital? Didn't really sound like there was any... No occupation history. No info bubble there. And those are on the victory logs. Uh... I don't see anything else that we can click on here besides rewards that we would get. I like how it says basic city, though, when you click on it. Uh, okay. Interesting. Interesting. With that in mind, let's dive over to Zone 2. Right, so we can see what Zone 2 is about. And we'll just we'll just grab anyone, right? At this point, it doesn't really matter. Uh, oh, you know what we can do? We can do the passes. I don't think we did that, so let's do that. Will this tell me anything? Uh, oh, I have to go a little bit more. Okay, here we go. Well, let me click on this. What? I have to go more? Oh my gosh, I have to zoom in all the way? Okay. <clears throat> so three days left for this bad grill. Let's look at the mountain fort. Let's look here. Uh, so you must be neighboring. That makes sense. Uh, declaration, war prep, all the same. Siege period when the prep is siege period. Okay. <clears throat> uh, wow. 
I like how it says siege period. When the war preparation period ends, the siege period begins. Attack the city center as quickly as possible during the siege. Wow. So they... I mean, let's be real. When you look at the fine details, what sticks out to you? I mean, does this feel like just a copy-paste, right? This is not a city, though. This is a pass, right? It's a mountain fort. It's not a city. Uh, so maybe, I mean, again, I can understand the occupation rules are still the same. Nothing really has changed here. Personally, I would like to have at least some language that differs. Because, again, this is not a city. This is a pass. That's what it is. So ah, does that rub me a little bit the wrong way? Ah, I have to be honest, it does. Because uh, to me, like that just comes off lazy, right? Curious on what anyone else thinks? That's just my view. Okay, <clears throat> so we've looked at that. Let's go look at one of the level four uh, or level six. We can look at one of the sun docks, which I imagine is going to be the same, right? I do like this. I do think this is cool where it's like this bridge here, right? I do think that's pretty dope. All right, let's click on this and see what we get. Excuse me. If it will let me click on it, we'll see how this works. Here we go. So Sundog must be oh, it's the same thing. It is the same thing. Same thing. My feelings are crushed. Uh... I just feel like it'd be nice if they said, oh, once you cap it, the bridge will appear, right? And then you can cross, you know, or whoever holds it. Like, that would have been nice to have some of those details. Now, can I click on this imaginary thing here? I can't. So nothing, I can't click on anything there. Okay. It is what it is, unfortunately. All right, let's go to uh, zone two. Which is West, so we're at, West okay, so let's, let's zoom in West Kingsland. Let's see what we got here. So we got level eight monuments. Now the captures are again, unless I see a new building, we're just going to assume everything's the same, uh, with the exception obviously of of the bonuses. But we got a level eight healing. Uh, we have level seven cities now. Still level nine capital. Uh, okay, so I don't really see anything else. We have level eight and level nine. Uh, looks like passes there. I guess we can maybe take a look. At, I mean, this is Monument of Healing. All units, types. I like how it says Monument of Healing, but it's all units, types, training speed. I just feel like maybe choose a different name there because why wouldn't this increase healing rates or something to do with healing? Like, I mean, that's just what comes to my mind, right? So that would have been something. Uh, okay, I don't think there's really anything else at that point, right? So let's do this. Let's go and look at, I guess we could take a look at the level 7 city because we haven't seen one of those. Um, I guess just because it is a different number, right? So let's look at that and we'll just kind of see what that one offers. Maybe just, you know, how it looks. Probably a lot of the same, I would imagine. Oh, that's a little bit bigger. Dude, the fact that I just have to zoom in here so much is intense. Okay. Just walk your way up. Who's the ruler? Uh, this position of ruler is vacant. Whose name shall be? Oh, that's pretty cool. I like how they got that. Someone's name will be engraved. That's cool. When we look at some of the finer details of, uh, of the cities. Looks like you have one over here. Oh, I see deputy. Oh, so these are like uh, positions, like uh, titled positions. That they'll give. Oh, yeah, see Deputy Ruler, and you can see there's three of them, and they have like a little indicator, which is probably what that will be. Okay, that's cool. Uh, which, this is similar to Infinity Kingdom. Infinity Kingdom had capitals where you could also issue additional buffs and titles uh, to players in those alliances. Wow, man, lots of similarities here. Wild. Okay, let's look at the final zone, because I'm already at 20, almost 25 minutes here. So we have the Imperial City. Uh, looks like that's... Can I click on this right here? Yeah, Imperial City, level 10. Uh, and then we have Secret Towers, which are around... I don't see anything else. I guess we could try zooming in a little bit more here. 
Okay. Yeah, it doesn't look like we have anything else here in these final zone for zone three. Okay. <clears throat> Let's go a little bit farther in, I guess. Probably I'm going to have to zoom in to click on this, I would imagine. Let's X out of that. I really want to click on this. I love how my mouse is not responding. Okay, maybe I have to zoom in more. What in the creation? I can't click on this. Okay. Sure, that's cool. Bunch of haters, jeez. Oh gosh, just, I have to zoom in this much? Okay, hang on. Now let me go see. I'm just gonna like zoom in heavy here. Like, you can't tell me nothing now. Come on, man, really? I had to zoom in this much just to see this thing? How dare you? Uh, so 37 days <clears throat> until this opens. Archers attack in Imperial City. Oh, wow. Okay, so basically you capture these, you get some buffs before hitting the Imperial City. Okay, cool. What are you reading? Doesn't look like it's anything interesting. All right, cool. Let's move on. Uh, all right, let's see here. Imperial City. 37 days, 2.2 million garrison. I'll, oh, look at this. I like how it tells you what the garrison is. Okay, so I'm a fan of this. I like how it tells you this. In other games, in some other games, you have to go and scout certain uh, buildings or objectives first, and then it'll tell you what that information is. I like how the, it just tells you straight up. Like, this is what it is. These are the marches that are in there. You know, come get wrecked, essentially. Uh, okay, let's look at Imperial City. Oh, look at this. They actually retitled stuff here, right? So, you know, they, they, you know, they detailed out things here. Uh, okay, which is what I would have expected uh, of them to do versus for uh, different level cities or if it's a city or a town or a pass. But nice to see that that it is being done here for the final objective. So Imperial City. Imperial City will be available on a regular basis once it is unlocked. The Clash shall last four hours. The first alliance to occupy the Imperial City for one hour, or the alliance that has occupied the Imperial City for the longest time, shall be the victor of this clash. Okay, cool. Uh, borders, the uh, alliances can only take part in the event when their territory borders. Okay, makes sense. During the event, I mean, let's be real. If you're bordering the city, there's a good chance that not every ugh, The logic here. Like, let's really... Un so let's understand some logic. Is that in these kinds of games, the only people that are going to be... Let me mute for a moment here. Okay. Realistically, the only people that are going to be fighting for the Imperial City are going to be the ones that have connected territory. But the difference here is that the likelihood of you having four or five enemies that are all connected to the final building, and then everyone's going to go at it in some kind of platonic way, is incredibly unlikely. I have never seen that happen in a Kingdom Builder uh, for a final objective. Basically, what everyone's trying to do... Uh, let me be clear. I'm talking about if you're at war and you haven't allied with anyone and it's still kind of a hostile kingdom, you are not as an alliance, especially if you are the strongest alliance or a strong alliance, you're not going to sit there and border the final building with multiple people that you are still fighting against. You're going to attack them first, remove their territory, and then make it so you're the only one who has territory connected, right, in, in those situations. The other side of it is that if you have multiple alliances that are connected to it, um, you might rotate the building, but it doesn't mean that everyone's going to participate and compete for the final objective, right? In in the in that in the kind of way that the developers may think they would or hope they would. So I mean, we'd have to see how that plays out. But I can almost say that there's a high percentage chance that will happen. Uh, that one of those ways will happen, right? Okay. So next one here is uh, during the event of occupying the sacred towers around the Imperial City, we'll grant Bosque. We saw that, and then battle rules. Uh, garrison defeat the garrison. Okay, Sun Legion. During the event, Sun Legions will, will spawn in the Imperial City and actively attack all governors. Okay. Uh, governance details. After some time, the leader of the Victorious Alliance can appoint a member within their alliance as the monarch. If the time expires with no appointment, the alliance leader will be auto-coronated as the monarch. Okay. 
so I guess cool. It'd, just, it'd be nice if we could see some more details here uh, on the city. Uh, again, maybe those will happen once it opens, but okay. Uh, that pretty much does it for what we got for you guys today, right? We're at about 30 minutes as we take a look at the last, or as we just finished taking a look at the last zone uh, and breaking down the cities, passes, uh, other objectives, other structures on the map. I hope you guys enjoyed this one, right? And I hope that it just helps people prep for eventually when they decide to get into the game. Uh, and as always, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below, along with um, anything else you'd like to see us cover um, during the beta up until release, or we should say until they open up more regions as well during the beta. So uh, that's it for me. As always, until next time, I'll catch y'all later.